rabbit, it'd be just the opposite. You, you, want, uh, you want the rabbit to be a little bit more active and, and uh, doing things a lot quicker than, than what you'd have that type of, of turtle do. Uh, this, one, this is one of my favorites here. It's just about rubbed away. The kids have, <laughs> have messed with it so much. Uh, I like this one because it had such a, a realistic look to it. But the, you know, uh, first, first of all, uh, when uh, you're talking about using a puppet, uh, what's the puppet going to be used for? If it's going to be used for a children's party, uh, then you want to make sure that you have some type of a routine. Uh, if it's uh, going to be used for uh, walk-arounds, uh, you either need a, a short little bit that you use, uh, or you need some type of a gimmick, uh, or in, in some cases, just a, a cute, fluffy puppet that uh, gives an opportunity for the, the child to uh, fall in love with it. I, when I bought this fellow, uh, when I went up to pay for him, uh, one of the gals, I, I was kind of messing with him a little bit, and one of the gals at the checkout stand says, "Oh, you've got a dog? Can I buy? Oh, that's not a real dog, is it? You know?" And I, I really like the realism of, of this particular dog, and you know, you don't have to do a lot with it. You know, it's one of those things that, that the kid sees fuzzy and warm and fluffy and and uh, non-frightening, and uh, it's the sort of thing that a, a kid would really like. Uh, now, as far as gimmicks, this is one of my favorites here. This fella here, this is Fuzzy. And what I like about Fuzzy, yeah, thank you, Fuzzy, I appreciate that. Okay. Ah. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, you can let loose of it. Let loose of it. All right, thank you. What I like about Fuzzy is that you can have kids feed him because Fuzzy's got an appetite. See, and he's got special foods that you give him. Like, like this, he likes pink. You like pink? Yeah, all right. You wanna try it? Yeah, I figured you would. You're always hungry, right? Yeah, all right, try it. How was it? Oh, it's good, it's really good. Okay, want a red one? All right, let's give you a red one. Now let the kids feed him. And they really like being able to feed the puppet. And, uh, you know, you open his mouth and let him see it. You know, he, he ate it. You know, he ate the food. They like that. So, uh, that one's got a gimmick. Uh, another gimmick puppet that I have here is my owl. I love my owl. Yeah, this is Owl Jolson here. Uh, oh. <laughs> What, what Does I like anybody about, get that joke anymore? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be my age. <laughs> what I like about this owl, and you see, you notice one of the things that I'm doing here? We've got, we've got two personalities in one here. You've got to learn to be able to split your attention. And that takes a lot of practice. Like uh, him, you know, I'll be talking to Jacob maybe, and I, I've got the owl looking around. And the thing that I like about this one is every now and then you can make him blink his eyes. So <laughs> the gimmick puppets, uh, they they really like them, and uh, but you don't have to use gimmick puppets. Jacob a while ago, he got this today. Was given to him. The gal gave a dollar for it. I'm watching him over there when we're having our meeting, and he's playing with this thing, and I notice that. He's got, he's looking at us, and he's got the thing looking around, you know, and getting some realism to it. So, see, it's, it, it's got personality. It's personality that, that he gave it. Uh, this is, this is one that, that Larry likes to use, and, and uh, he's a, he likes to use it on his finger a lot of times. Yeah. But the thing I like most about this type of puppet is you can make him realistic by, by just having him crawling up your, your arm, make it look like he's getting away. You know, the, the thing is, you want to add some realism to it, you want to give some, just like, you know, I'm looking surprised. Oh, he's getting away. 
format. Uh, so the, the thing is, you want to, to maintain that, uh, that fantasy. Uh, Jacob, uh, he has used puppets here, what, about the last couple of years now uh, in your storytelling? I've been doing storytelling for about five years, and I've used puppets uh, all five years. Okay, all five years. Okay, here is a, a picture of Jacob. He goes to different schools, and he does storytelling, and uh, that's a picture of one of the schools that he's been to, and uh, it has made him very, very popular with these schools. They liked his storytelling to begin with, but now that he's added puppets to it, then uh, they're really psyched up when, when they hear he's coming to one of their schools. So uh, that's that's another thing. And, and he uses he uses so much expression when he's using these puppets. Um, the main thing, regardless of what your situation your program is, is to make that puppet come to life. And there's only one way you're going to do it. It's like with anything else in clowning. Uh, you have to train your mind, uh, in this instance, to do two things at once. And the way you do that is to practice it, and practice it, and practice it. And you can practice it in front of a mirror, or uh, when you think you're getting a little better at it, then you can practice it in front of somebody that you know is going to give you a, an honest evaluation of how you're doing. But the main thing, if you notice, uh, when I was working these puppets, uh, you know, I could be talking to you, and I've got him looking around. See, he's not, I'm not looking at him. Uh, one of the mistakes that, that uh, a lot of people make uh, when they first get into dealing with puppets is they're looking at the puppet all the time. Well, it kind of takes away from the realism. You want, you want it to be a separate character, and so you know you can, you can concentrate a little bit on what he's doing, and a little bit on on what you're doing some, somebody else. You can take just about any puppet and make it come to life. Uh, this picture right here. Oh, I almost hate to show it to you. This was my first clown makeup and everything. Uh, the, the white duck that I have there, I have a, I have a hen that operates on the same principle. When I bought that duck, I bought it at Worlds of Fun. Now, I wasn't clowning or anything. I was there as a, you know, as just a, enjoying the, the park. And I saw that thing in a, section, you know, where they sell the souvenirs, and I just had to have it. So I got him, and, and I'm trying to get used to using him, and I sit down there, you know, they, they've got this area where you can sit here where the trains run, and, you know, I'm looking at him, trying to get him to look around and everything, and I'm fooling with that thing, and I'm telling Karen, boy, this thing's really cool, you know, and then I've noticed, I've got a crowd. They thought that I was hired my world's of fun to entertain them with my time. So, uh, and you know, this one's got a rod. Another gimmick puppet. I, I love the gimmicks because, uh, you know, so many times the kids are going, how do they do that? I said, well, it's real. That's how. You know, haven't you ever seen a real chicken? It's not like that. Well, it's a clown chicken. Clown chickens look like that. But I need to put a big red nose up. <laughs> Another thing I like as far as realism are your spring puppets. And Larry's real good with spring puppets. I've seen him use them. Uh, you, know, you don't have to get fancy with this as far as your uh, pattern and all that. You know, all you want to do is get their attention anyway, just to convince them that you're here and, and this is, this is uh, something separate that you've got with you. You know, like, like uh, making him feed, you know. It's my, it's my feed, see? Isn't he neat? Hmm? Are you neat? Yeah, see, he thinks he's neat. Practice, 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 practice. Uh, my, uh, my biggest thing was when I got into 
planning, I wanted to do balloons. But once I discovered puppets, uh, you know, I went back into my childhood. That's where I've been ever since. I, I hate to admit this, uh, but I'm going to. I've got over 70 puppets. Uh, I've got some in a locker, some in, <laughs> some in a closet. But I just love puppets. Jake gave me his tonight. <laughs> You know, and Karen says you can't have it. You gotta <laughs> give it back. <laughs> this is the one uh, that I use when uh, when we work the circus. Uh, our grand entrance, you know, they want something very visible. And I got a hold of this one from another clown. I don't remember whether I bought it or it was given to me. I don't I remember. I think I bought it, yeah. But uh, you know, it's they can see it the nose nose blood bleed seat. And you know you're walking around the ring, and you're having to do other things. You know you need to try to make it separate, something that that uh, it, it uh, complements you, but it's it's its own separate character. Uh, you were saying, how do you get get one to to uh, interact with you? Uh, I mean, look, look, I'm looking okay. at it. I, I can show you, I can show you one example that, that I, I did at Cleo's class, is, uh, uh, see if I can remember the story. Uh, hey, uh, Fuzzy, uh, how you been? Oh, all right. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, you look a little down. Well, yeah. I'm down. Well, what happened? What makes you feel so down? Well, I uh, I ran over a cat. Oh my goodness, you did? Yeah, it comes back. Oh, did anybody see it? No. Uh, but I went looking for the owner. I knocked on this door. Okay, that's good. And uh, what then? Well, this lady, she comes up. And and, and I said, yeah, uh, do you own a cat? And she says, well, yes, I do. And, 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 I, and I says, uh, well, I think I ran over him. And, uh, oh, that's terrible. Yeah. And she says, well, uh, what did it look like? Matter what you want to do with it. The main thing is you want them to come to life. 